right, moving right along with a road tutorial, practicing nonchalance, right? At 50 years old, that's doing this for 20, 25 years, and seeing the nonchalance that we uh, unfortunately didn't have a luxury of, uh, we must, must strive for the nonchalance uh, parameter that we can't program into the system. So uh, that's tantamount in this exercise. Uh, ergonomics, work, uh, aesthetics. If you're gonna have to produce, well then you're gonna have to be in an environment that is conducive to you being able to produce effectively and efficiently. A lot of times, you don't have the luxury of choosing your environment, you take what you can get. So, uh, if we're in the business of creation, then I insist that the environment be um, more aesthetically pleasing and can, more conducive to my, uh, my mental and physical state of mind. Uh, we're going to be conveying emotive forms <laughs> inclusive of yourself and me. So it's 9.30 and I get most of my work done before noon. And uh, at noon I should be going to lunch. And then I should be coming back around two. And I should be walking around ensuring that the deliverables are being worked on. And then I should go home and detach from work or uh, go out to dinner uh, and then come home and detach from work or maybe go to a second job which is just as equally as aesthetically pleasing and conducive to my production uh, ex expedition practice uh, and then that will be the day so uh, again there's a method to my madness um, they say uh, you are you know, you, you work hard, and, and a lot of times in return, all you get is more hard work. So all those, I think, old adages hold true. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, Rome wasn't built in the day. Um, baby steps, right? Baby steps. So again, at this level, it's becoming apparent that if we're going to uh, be creating families, then we should uh, mind our P's and Q's and uh, ensure that uh, we remember it's not, it wasn't easy getting this far because of all of the uh, perplexing complex curtain walls that we had to go through along the way. Being spun in this direction, and spun in that direction, deviating from center, uh, trying to keep our focus so that we can uh, convey our articulation effectively, which is a great segue into creating a revolve, right? Let's move on. Let's move on. Hopefully you have your coffee and a good supply of whatever tobacco product you like or don't like. If you got your candy at your desk, whatever. Every man has his vice. So let's create a revolve, shall we? Let's move on to the process of creating the legs of the table. I believe these exercises are going to bring all of these parts together as individual families and then nest them within each other. I think that's the way this is going, because now we're going to use the revolve command to create a leg of this table. So if we go to, uh, go back to Revit, I have the um, chapter 15 table leg RFA opened from the book, uh, the book's web, uh, web companion website. So let's move on to the process of creating the legs for the table. You will use the revolve tool to create the shape. However, you will create the shape only once in a separate family that will be loaded into the table family, which I have open, and placed multiple times. You have created a preloaded family for the purpose of this segment of this exercise. Download and open the C15 table leg RFA from this book's web page. You will create a revolved form, assign height and material parameters, and then load it into the table family. In the C15 table leg file, activate the front view. Activate the front elevation view. You will see that we have sketched a 2D profile consisting, excuse me, of invisible lines. Invisible line. If you notice, though, 
Generic models projection cut, generic models cut, hidden lines projection, hidden lines cut. Again, I'm going to bring you back into the visibility graphics and the view range and how we have to uh, always keep that in mind um, because the cut plane and the projection levels are important, very, very important in display representation of the software. And if it's very, very tricky, but you, you, can, you can get it. You can get a grip on it if you focus and you practice. And again, practice makes perfect. From the draw panel in the contextual tab, click Revolve. Make sure the pick tool is selected. Make sure the pick lines tool. Pick lines creates a line based on the existing wall line or edge selected in the drawing area. Select chain of lines, move the cursor over a line segment, press tab to highlight the entire chain, and click. Hover the mouse pointer over one of the provided profile lines and press the tab key once. Then click to select all the lines of the profile. Hover over, tab, hover over, hit tab. I didn't get them all. I got this side. Control tab. I, I only got, I didn't get all of them. Hold on, cancel that, hold on. Hold on. From the create tab, revolve, make sure the pick lines, hover over one of them. That's the reference line. It's this one that didn't get selected, and this one. There it is, got it. All right, I, I hit this as a reference point. Now, right off the bat, 360, end angle. Just keep that in mind. When you're revolving around a reference plane, just like you would mirror something over across an axis. And keep in mind that, you know, um, these are axis. This is X, Y, and Z is coming at you and going away from you. And that sometimes folks just can't grasp that. So, um, Select all the lines of the profile. Do not worry about constraining any of the sketch lines because this shape will not be dependent on adjacent geometry. Click the axis alignment tool in the contextual tab. Sketches the line to use as an axis for revolving geometry. Select the pick lines mode and then click the vertical reference plane in the drawing area. Well, pick lines is already highlighted, and click the vertical reference plane. Highlighted lines overlap. Lines may not form closed loops. Click the finish button. Axis of revolution not specified. Really? I one I did. Highlighted lines overlap. All right, so what, that one extra one that shouldn't be there? Is that what it is? All right, well, it's, it doesn't, it, we shouldn't be getting this error message, so my assumption is that, yeah, this is a sketch line, but did I, did I bring that in by accident? Hold on a second. Did I actually, this is, okay, let's try that one more time. Let's go to Create, Revolve, Tab, I'll pick lines, tab. Well, I have the option of selecting this one, this one, all of these, and this one. And this is the one that was giving us a problem, this model line. It said lines overlap because there's a model line here, and then that's a reference. If I tab, chain of walls or lines, then there's this reference plane. But if I was to select just, let's see here, if I, is there another line here that I'm not seeing that's causing this problem? Yeah, it's saying this is a reference line. So I want to delete it. And I want to pick lines again. Hold on a second. 
there are so many lines that are nested in this drawing that I believe that is what is causing the grief. There's so many lines here. In addition to the curvature. See, there's, there's the reference line, but underneath it, there's this other line. I want to, there's another one. How many of them are there? You see what I'm talking about? So let's remove this one. And there's still that one under there. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see if that's enough for now. Axis of evolution not specified. Okay, I'll, okay. I'm with you, I'm with you. Pick lines. Adultals constrain it. The lines must be in clo closed loops. Well, before you said that it was uh, overlapping. So there's definitely a glitch. So let's just hold this for a second. Cancel out of here. Just, just uh, discard. Now, all right, so if I was to select all of these and just hit this seven, seven invisible lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so I'm not gonna use the pick lines command. I'm gonna try something else because obviously there's something that's uh, causing this to give us an error message. So instead of using pick lines, I'm just gonna select, if I can. Uh, they won't let me select with an encompassing box. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can select all, all of those without the reference line, and hit the axis line, pick lines, that axis, and hit okay. Oh, now I get it. All right, well, there was definitely something extra picked. All right, so we have this nail, this 10 penny nail, if you will, this uh, toothpick, this leg. We have this leg or a toothpick, if you will. Oh, my lawyer doesn't see this. And complete the revolve command. Creating a revolve. And in the line dimension between the reference level and the reference plane above the revolve. Select the dimension, and in the label dimension panel, choose the create parameter button. Name the new parameter, leg height, and make sure it's, it's a type parameter. Well, we're in the front view, so that's gonna give us the opportunity to annotate a line from the um, reference level, which is here, up to the, uh, the top. to the reference plane above the revolve, which is right there. And then we can turn it into a parameter. So then select it, go to the parameter dialog box, make sure it's a type parameter, it's a dimension parameter, and let's call it leg height. Hit OK. And make sure it's a type parameter, which it was, not an instance. Select the solid revolve. In the Properties palette, click the Associate Family Parameter button for the Material property. Create a new parameter named Leg Material. Associate Parameter, New Parameter, Leg Material. She's got legs, she knows how to use them. And click OK to close the dialog box. Before you save the leg family and load it onto the table family, you should consider whether the nested family needs to be scheduled. In the case of a table leg, 
Probably not. However, you will load some chairs into the table family later. And those will surely need to be scheduled. Switch to the Create tab, and from the Properties palette, click the Family category and the Parameters button. In that dialog box, you will see a list of family parameters that contains a parameter called Shared. When this box is checked, the nested families can be scheduled. For example, if you check the box for the table leg -like family loaded into the family ta uh, the table family, loaded the table family into a project, and then placed several instances of the table, you could create a schedule to count the total number of legs in the project. For a later exercise, leave the shared box unchecked. Now, if you think about this, if you were working for IKEA or any type of furniture manufacturer that uh, uh, manufacturers assemble your self furniture, um, you can see how not only uh, would this become advantageous to you, but you could actually use this program to draw the installation manual. You could use this project to create the installation instructions or the assembly instructions for this particular piece of furniture, right? You've all used those. You've been in the, the stores where you have to assemble the furniture yourself. A swing set? I remember I, I, I assembled the swing set. It took me like uh, all day. It took me all day long. It was so, uh, so many pieces. So uh, I hold, um, uh, I admire a lot of these, uh, these craftsmen that can assemble these things. I, I sit in awe. That's why I do like to get out of the office. I insist that I go to the project sites. And a lot of times, when you're in this capacity, they'd rather see you sit in front of the terminal and not move. But I'm moved by and inspired by uh, the, the project as it comes into fruition and uh, seeing it in progress and seeing it after it's complete and seeing it uh, in the pre-designed conceptual phase is, uh, is a luxury that um, I'm trying to have. I want to see from all sides of the, uh, all sides. It's a lot easier that way. Keeping, keeping an open mind, right? And again, this is an educational set assessment on your end and on my end. And again, there is a certain level of, uh, of critiquing that I have to keep in mind. So I want to deviate that far from center. So we're just going to leave the leg uh, shared parameter. Um, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to share it. We leave that box unchecked. So, um, Let's go into the, uh, the family properties type. So we go up to here, right? Leg material by category. Hold on, let's make sure. I read this correctly. from the create panel. Well, it's in every panel, isn't it? Is it in the modified panel too? Yeah, it is in the modified panel too. Uh, the modified tab too. These are a list of family parameters, right? Now, we haven't assigned this leg to a category, a family category yet. That's why it's telling us to do this. Hold on. Let me see here. Shared. So, is this considered? Um, have they given us um, a family category yet? Uh, family generic models. No, it didn't. It didn't. That's what. Okay. So, um, you will see a list of family parameters that contain a parameter called shared. When this box is checked, the nested family can be scheduled, just like we said. Um, for later exercise, leave this shared box unchecked, but this is in, now it is now in this category. 
It's not work plane based. Um, it doesn't cut with voids, could. Uh, always vertical, most likely. Um, I just want to put the table on the ceiling, uh, uh, dancing on the ceiling. Um, again, we should have all these uh, catalog numbers put in, but we don't need it to be a room calculation point. So we're just going to hit OK. And now it's category, it's family category is furniture, right? So if we were to change the material by category, then anything in the furniture, uh, any family in the furniture category would change um, by that material or any of those parameters that are shared. All right, so let me light my cigarette because it went out. Speaking of Revolve. 28 class cigarettes go to the head of the class. All right, so that pretty much uh, brings us to uh, creating a blend, a sweat blend. And speaking of blends, this is a pretty good blend of Turkish and um, domestic uh, tobaccos. One of these days I'm going to quit, but I'm not going to quit uh, um, building information modeling. You can take that to the bank. And I've had a lot of uh, speed bumps along the way. But perseverance is the key and persistence of tools. Uh, so um, we're going to get into creating a blend and a sweat blend a little later. And we did already. And these are really cool because they take on all sorts of crazy shapes. And if your thing is fabrication, again, we're not just necessarily talking buildings and infrastructure. We're talking um, 3D printing. I mean, if we wanted to, these little components that were creating these families, these shapes, and these of, um, patterns, we can 3D print them out and create toys if you wanted. Pokemon or Minecraft or what's the latest Fortnite of characters. It's, that's what this software does. It, uh, it casts in place in a lot of instances. And uh, as you can see, if you're paying attention to this instruction, you can see how I'm using this software. If you, if, you, if you pay attention carefully, I'm using it a little differently. Now, I could be using it in the capacity of actually creating infrastructure. I could be using it in the capacity of creating objects for manufacture. I could be using it in the process of creating an instructional series. Or I could use, be using it in a little bit of a different aspect um, that's more advantageous and more efficient. Now, I'm going to leave that up to you to discern how am I using this software to my advantage? How am I, I said from one of the first videos that you could use this to leverage in your everyday world. Again, this is an educational assessment on both ends of this camera. And I, 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 I talk a lot, but I don't ask a lot of questions. I, I search for the answers I and mean, I, I ask, um, the uh, research department where I could find the answer to some of my questions. But I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not individually asking you a question. You on the other end, the audience. And, and I could easily pose questions and quizzes and, 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 and do all those things to ascertain whether or not you're capable or whether or not you're worth me expending money on you so that you can produce for me. Now, isn't that what's happening in, in most work environments? You're under the auspices or authority of a body that dictates the financial instrument uh, duration, pitch, and magnitude that you will be utilizing to coexist in an environment Right? Isn't that what's happening in the world? Unless, of course, you're at the top of the rung and you make all the decisions and you are the end all be all or the authoritative voice. And again, I'll reiterate it. The only thing worse than authority is the absence of it. So everyone has a boss. Everyone has a boss. Be your own boss. It's, a lo it's lonely at the top. It's lonely at the top. No man is an island. Sometimes I like to work from the neck down where I don't have to use um, those skills that um, I either have attained 
or decided not to use. I know I'm going off on a tangent and talk a little bit um, from a uh, workforce environment or a, a work, work, work environment experience. But I've been in a lot of shops, a lot of companies, a lot of different industries, a lot of sectors. And um, again, an application, a software application at the application level of the OSI uh, networking model is a, is a level. And there are levels in this seven layer OSI model where you fit in and how uh, you can utilize this network architecture to your advantage is uh, purely um, based on your own perspective. Or mine. <laughs>